Hi everybody, thank you for watching Sandra's Art Studio. Here I'm using that uh, spaghetti machine to flatten out my polymer clay and I'm just cutting little circles. I'm actually using a lipstick casing and it's not just the circles but on top of the circles I'm cutting a little bit more off of each uh, circle and I'm staggering them and this is to make my pineapple hair barrette. So I live in Florida and I created this business from scratch and it's been a lot of fun for me. So I will be making more tutorials on how I create each one of these fun hair clips. So here I'm doing the top and I actually made two sizes and two different styles because everything is kind of like a trial um when it comes to these hair clips i'm not really sure what's going to be more liked in my area at this point and how they're going to come out i only been doing this for a year so i wouldn't consider myself um, a master at it but i can teach you some of the techniques that i actually been experiencing myself so once i cook my polymer clay at 275 degrees for 15 minutes I will have a harder piece and that's what I'm gonna make my mold out of also one of the techniques that I've learned is to actually put a piece of tape on the bottom so that way you can kind of stick your um, pieces to it so they don't float and then they have like different you know variations on thickness because if it starts to move like one side is deeper than the other side when you turn this whole thing around i it's one of those things you have to experience maybe you're you're not really sure what i'm talking about if you've never done these moles but if you have some experience doing moles then you know exactly what i'm talking about so you put that tape on the bottom it kind of like holds your piece in place and also you know sometimes when you pull pour the silicone mold things start to swim a little bit and one piece starts to touch another piece and it's a little bit of a disaster. I learned the hard way. So here I am trying to maximize the space that I have on this little tray and that's why I'm making sure that uh, everything is going to fit without touching and I'm going to have enough space in between the edges and each one of these uh, pieces. So this product here is a two-part mix and there's a limit in time. So you have to be really ready when you're going to pour this silicone onto your pieces. And wear gloves because to get the stuff off of you, you have to use alcohol. And alcohol is not really good for your skin all the time. I mean, it will just dry you out. Be careful with this material because if you start to wear it, it's almost impossible to get it off of you. I use alcohol, but like I said before, that will dry out your skin. So that's not good. Wear gloves. So it doesn't matter what brand silicone you're going to use. You're going to have to mix it really, really, really well. If you don't, you'll have sticky parts that are on the side or in the middle of the cup. And um, actually your mold could have... A little sticky part too not just the cup you know usually if you have it around your cup usually you're going to have it somewhere um in your mold too a lot of people actually like to mix it very well and then change cups like you know pour it onto another cup and then mix it a little bit more and then go ahead and pour your silicone mold i personally don't do that i just like mix the heck out of it that's what i do so after i let it sit for like a whole day then I can go ahead and remove and you're going to see in a moment how the removal can be a little messy. You have to be a little patient with it because some of the silicone will seep underneath each one of the figures and sometimes on the way of pulling this out, it will actually uh, break some of your masterpieces. So with an X-Acto knife, I will go ahead and cut some of the pieces of silicone that have seeped 
under each one of my pieces when I flip it over. And as you can see, they are painted, these pieces are painted blue on one side and they have that terracotta color on the other side and that's because um, the clay with the silicone for some reason stays a little gooey and when you paint it with acrylic you can paint your uh, polymer clay cooked with acrylic and that has a cleaner effect when you're pouring your silicone on top of your pieces so here sometimes you know you break your pieces on the way out that's okay that's as long as you get your mold that to me is the most important part you know and then I like to make if I really like a piece I'll make my next molds out of the um, epoxy resin pieces instead of the polymer clay because they don't break so once you have your mold ready what you want to do is make sure that everything is level the area where you're going to pour your epoxy resin is going to be level because otherwise you're going to have one side of it a little thicker than the other side and sometimes they can be so skinny the one side can be so skinny that it's just useless you have to you know do another pour just forget about it it's it's better to do it right the first time and have it leveled and you think sometimes it's like oh you know this looks close enough no actually take a level and see how level your uh, counter is sometimes you'll be surprised in this case I have um, this board on top of my counter because it is a little um, unlevel actually it goes down a little bit on the back so here I'm pouring my epoxy and you want to be careful with this material too some of these epoxies can get really hot and burn you and on one frame you're gonna see where I have the green silicone mold and the other frame I have this clear translucent whitish um, silicone mold and that's because I've tried different materials and when I uh, finally find the one that I really really like I'll stick to it I'm not really giving information on materials um, I feel like I need just a little bit more experience before I start letting people know exactly what is it that I'm using I think it's good to experiment um, everybody has different needs you will find that um, really quick as you experience with different materials so once you have your pieces and you take them out of your mold like it's not done now it's all about putting it together so I actually glued the tops with the sticks using the same epoxy resin but I use clear instead of coloring it and then of course I'm gonna grind the edges because they come out with some sharp edges you can actually cut yourself and I also want to set a curved shape to these pieces so I use hot water to set the shape to make the shape to give it a little bit of a bend and then I use the cold water to actually set the shape And the last thing I do is I color the tips that are sticking out or sometimes I have to make adjustments. You know, if I want the tip to be a little uh, smaller, then I'll go ahead and cut it and reshape the point because sometimes these sticks can be a little bit too long. But um, let's say if I'm using the, the starfish uh, stick, sometimes you want to leave it a little long because uh, some of these girls like to use it as a hair stick. So you do need the length. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and give me a like and also subscribe. It takes a lot of effort to do these videos. I really admire the people that have been doing it strong for quite some time. For me, I'm trying to get used to the whole routine and it is a little bit of a challenge, but I think that that gets a little easier with time. So on the comments also, um, let me know what is it that you want to see um, I think that I'm pretty much gonna do different uh, different shapes of the hair barrettes and show you like the step by step and you know see where that goes. So I want to thank you guys for watching and stick to the end of the video. You'll see the final results and I'll see you the next time. Bye.